In this video, we will present a solution to EMO 2004 problem 4. Firstly, we'll have a look at the statement. We are given n positive real numbers, t1, t2 up to tn, such that n squared plus 1 is larger than the sum of the ti's times the sum of the inverses of the ti's. And now we are asked to prove that for any indices i less than j less than k, we have that ti, tj, tk are side lengths of some triangle. In other words, for some given indices, we shall verify that for these three numbers, all three triangle inequalities hold. Taking a look at this expression, we see that we can bound it from below with n squared, for example, by Cauchy-Schwarz. Another proof that uses more local structure goes like this. We have the sum over all i of ti times the sum over all j of 1 divided by tj. Now, for all ti times 1 divided by ti, we get in total an n, and then we have to add the sum of all i distinct to j, or i less than j, of ti divided by tj, but now also adding the other case, um, plus tj divided by ti. By the AMG of inequality, this is greater than or equal to 2 times the square root of ti times tj divided by tj times ti, which equals to 2. And since we have n over 2 sums here, we can thus bound this entire term from below by exactly n squared. We have given that n squared plus 1 is larger than this term, and therefore it is not that far away from its lower bound. So we might want to take a look at the equality case, which we have if we have equality here always, and therefore equality uh, is equivalent to um, t1 is equal to t2 is equal to so on uh, up to tn, because AMG um, has equality if and only if those two sums are equal. Let's take a look at what we want to prove. And assume that this does not hold, namely we can find such i, j and k with t i, t j and t k not being sides of a triangle. This tells us that equality here does not hold and therefore we don't get an equality case here either. And moreover, we want to even prove that we can increase our lower bound by at least one because that would give us a contradiction. I will write this assumption down but in a slightly different way. Namely, we assume that there exists a distinct um, i0, j0, and uh, k0, such that ti0 is greater than or equal to tj0 plus tk0, which is exactly equivalent to the inverse of that statement. Let's show that these three indices alone are responsible for an increase of our lower bound by a 1. And for that, we take a look at three numbers, a greater than or equal to b plus c, where those are positive reals again. Since a is at least b plus c, we can bound the sum of a divided by b plus b divided by a, and the same terms for a divided by c and c divided by a from below. We factor out the b plus c to obtain that this is equal to b plus c times 1 divided by a plus a divided by bc. We can bound bc from above using amgm to obtain that all of this is at least b plus c times 1 divided by a plus a divided by b plus c squared all over 4, which is equal to 4a divided by b plus c squared. After redistributing b plus c into that sum, we get almost a sum of reciprocals. Namely, this is equal to b plus c divided by a plus 4 times a divided by b plus c. To get the equality case exactly where a is equal to b plus c, we um, split this term off, namely such that we rewrite this as b plus c divided by a plus a divided by b plus c, all plus 3a divided by b plus c. Now, as before, we can bound the first term from below with a 2, and the second one is, because of our condition, at least equal to 3, and therefore all of this can be bound from below with 5. And 5 is 1 more than 4, which is the lower bound that we would have gotten with our previous strategy. Therefore, this should be enough to increase our lower bound here by at least 1. So, let's again try to bound 
the sum over all i of ti times the sum over all j of 1 divided by tj. We first express this in a similar way as before. This is equal to n plus the sum over indices i less than j. But now we exclude those where i and j are equal to i0, j0, or they are equal to i0, k0. And then we sum again over, or we sum up ti divided by tj plus tj divided by ti. Now we left out two sums that correspond to exactly a sum of four terms, namely ti0 divided by tj0 plus tj0 divided by ti0 plus ti0 divided by tk0 and plus tk0 divided by ti0. That is, by our assumption, at least equal to 5. And again, we bound those terms from below uh, with a 2. And therefore, in total, we obtain that all of this is greater than or equal to n squared plus 1, which implies a contradiction. So our assumption was wrong, and therefore we have indeed proven that this is true, and we are done.